when you're getting a good history from this patient? And what are some of the physical exam findings that we'll find on these patients? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, it, it's always interesting because often when you ask these patients, they are similar presentation uh, that you have before uh, labor or often, and you say, hey, have you injured your wrist? And the answer is always no. And you say, okay, have you injured your wrist five to 10 years ago? And sometimes you kind of have to prod because they'll be like, oh, I do remember I, you know, I fell while carrying something five or 10 years ago and it bothered me for a little while, but I didn't really think much of it. And this is the first time I'm being checked out for it. it it's a little bit of a fishing expedition to get the trauma because keep in mind when talking about slack and snack, like I was saying, it's chronic going on for most likely years and years. So the initial trauma is, is far back in their history. Okay. And, um, and so once you get that history, you find out that, you know, they've had some remote wrist injury maybe years ago and they have pain. What are some of the things that you want to look for when you're physically examining these patients? Are there any special maneuvers or there any places that's, uh, that's particularly tender or, you know, hurt or uh, can you kind of just walk us through that? Sure. So the, the first thing to do is, is, you know, in hand surgery, you got a lot of little bones in a small area and just kind of taking the time to palpate appropriately really can help kind of guide at least your thought process. So sometimes they'll have that classic kind of snuff box tenderness, not necessarily because of a scaphoid fracture, but just that's where that beaking and that arthritis is. And then as you uh, roll over kind of over that third dorsal, second dorsal compartment, they'll have that dorsal radial tenderness and they can be quite tender there. And then as you go further ulnar dorsally, you'll start feeling the SL. The SL is often very tender in its own right. And once you start kind of getting this radial side of the wrist with a little bit of a history of, oh yeah, I had a trauma a while ago, should really kind of peak you and to start thinking about that. One of the things you can do early on is, is the Watson maneuver, which there's been some studies showing that the sensitivity and specificity is, is, is not exactly 100%, but what you do is you put your, your thumb on the distal pole of the scaphoid, pushing it dorsally, and you take the wrist from ulnar to radial deviation. And what happens is, is since that SL is uncoupled and that scaphoid is uncoupled from the rest of the proximal row, it actually subluxes out the dorsal radius, feels some pain, and then when you relax on it, it clunks back in. Mm -hmm. And that's what the Watson maneuver is. But like I said, that's often in the early stages of the SL. When we start talking about slack and arthritic changes, the scaphoid's been sitting in a fixed position for a while, so you won't necessarily see that Watson because it doesn't have the freedom to shift out the, the back of the radius right of the scaphoid fossa.